have you been here 23 times um, through our history? What was your favorite life and why? Um, my favorite life um, was a couple different ones, but I think the problem in my life was horror. Most of them are very short. Um, this is my longest life I've ever had. But I don't like it that much um, because I feel that this life is, it just feels like a dead end. Okay, and it feels that I don't, um, you know, I don't feel confident in this, in this life right now. But since the question was, what is my favorite life? Um, I have to say, when I was working in the scullery, a um, medieval castle in England. Um, actually, you worked in a castle in France. Or so. um, yeah, it was uh, a few. It was um, actually around was late, late Middle Ages. Um, but I did, you know, I enjoyed it. It was a wonderful time. You know, the pomp and the circumstance and the royal court. And even though I just worked in the kitchen washing the dishes and the, and the stuff like that, the cookware, it was still just a wonderful time to enjoy. Um, you know, occasionally mingling, you know, in the scullery with, you know, you know, people or what if I wasn't washing dishes and stuff or cleaning the kitchen, um, I would be, you know, sometimes cleaning the great banquet halls and I got a chance to, um, or some, you know, or the floors and I get a chance to meet some of the um, aristocracy. Most of the time, unfortunately, they tend to look down at you because you were just nothing more than just a knave, but there was... There were a few good, kind-hearted people, and I, I enjoyed, um, you know, talking with them just as I do today. Um, I, I still have a lot of affinity for the dishwashing of pots and pans, but you know, the biggest problem is is that uh, things automation it just doesn't really feel the same anymore. You know, automation is put a rack of dishes in and close the door, and it does it all by itself. Yeah, and then and, and it's kind of, or if it's animation dishwasher, you put them on the racks, you know, the dishes in the racks, and then they go through this big conveyor belt to the machine, and it comes out the other side. Uh, really, not really that exciting of a life. Yeah. Well, what was your favorite time? me I think I had a couple of good times I I enjoyed you know serving the Roman, the Roman army many 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 thousands of years ago uh, as a centurion I enjoyed um, you know defending Rome it was great but you know the, the Roman army is hard life and it really was um, really tough on, on your feet especially in carrying all that armaments like in the course of gladius and the other weapons and the shields it really was very very um, challenging to be a, a a roman footman in the roman empire um uh, but it was it was fun it was just um you got treated good but you really got you had to work hard to do it what was your worst life? Dying during childbirth. Um, back in the 17th century was probably the worst because there just wasn't the kind of medical technology we have today. And so and when I was being raised, and I mean, my husband was a real asshole. So I really had a hard time. He used to say I was too domineering and too much of a pig. 
take her that slap, but the truth of the is, I was just, you're naturally a masculine type soul, so you're going to be more of a domineering person anyway. Yeah. What was your worst life? Uh, they were all pretty bad. Um, being raped in World War II in France, France Mahler certainly goes under the pretty bad situations. I didn't really like that very much at all. I felt that I was, here I was, I was a very nice Parisian girl I could add. It was funny, your name was Michelle Dento. My name is Michelle Dento, you're right, and it was the funny thing. But, um, all my lives were very short, you know. Like, for example, when I was working in the scullery, I, I, I died of uh, tuberculosis. And so, I mean, I suffered a lot of hardships. And uh, this life here where I'm living now is probably um, the best life I've ever had uh, as far as health goes and also um, you know, longevity. But it's not really, um, but as far as excitement goes, uh, let's put it this way. Um, it really isn't so exciting because you, you got to understand like, that this is a life where everything's automated. There's not even really any reason to do, feel that we need the human being anymore because human beings have become expendable. Um, that sounds like something for uh, one of your channel videos. Yeah, but, you know, I think we should talk about briefly here because, you know, even when I was working in the scullery, you know, in the 16th century, it really was a very, we were essential. I mean, you needed the scullery. You needed the scullery worker uh, that kept the, the pots and the pans clean, that cleaned the floors, that made sure that, you know, the, the servants, you know, the service was served on clean tables. Because we used to eat out of these tables. They were trestle tables. We never do it. The, the, the insets were in the tables where all the food would be placed. We didn't use tablecloths back in the 15th century, 16th century, sorry. Um, but the fact is that, you know, there was, we're beginning to, um, haven't quite gotten to the point yet where with the French, um, you know, with the 16th and his wife had coming up with cookware such as the butter knife and stuff like that. We tend to forget that. Um, but the, so people kind of wanted to have the trestle table clean so that when they put the swords and their daggers down, which they'd be eaten with, that they would at least they would have, uh, be sure that um, it was a clean surface to place their utensils in. You know, that brings a question. Did, was there ever often um, with all that sharp metal was there ever a time when somebody would actually kill somebody at the dinner table um yes it has happened unfortunately um people you know remember you got a sharp piece of steel you know you you, you, know, you usually use your dagger or your dirt for you know like a fork or you use your fingers or you use both but still, having that sharp steel at your ready side, or iron, which often cases the little, the little inferior blades are made out of in more inferior metals. But basically, still, uh, if someone decided to shove a stiletto between your rib cage, uh, it didn't matter if it was made out of steel or if it was made out of iron. You still died. Yeah, you still died. You still died. So yeah, you you really. So it was very important that we had manners, um, is to keep the conversation at the table from getting to the point where, um, that somebody wants to draw someone else's blood. But, uh, it did happen back then. And only the 16th wife, um, Marie Antoinette know that, and that's one of the reasons why she insisted on having, uh, cutlery for uh, the people to use during uh, Louis XVI's reign. That's when the butter knife and the, the standard fork and the spoon. The spoon already existed. But the other utensils were kind of um, you know, didn't exist. Except, like I said, you provide your own knife and you would use that along with your fingers to eat food. It's hard to believe, but it's true. I, you still do it today. I see you eat salad with your bare fingers. 
old habit. Yeah, I see you do it though, it's crazy. You go in there, you go, and like, you don't even think about it. And you're really fast. I uh, know. Um, but, you know, like you said, you, you died in, in miscarriage. You died in, uh, in, uh, in childbirth in, uh, in the 17th century. I mean, honestly, I must have been really sick of you. I just got mad and I mean, used to fight all night long. Oh, God. So, you know, you guys, of course, we fight too. Yeah, we do. But I think it's more like when we fight, it's like we know, um, you, you know, it's true. We, just like any couple, we fight. But I think that um, it was very different back then because, you know, I thought my integrity was being questioned. Oh, okay. Yeah, your integrity, of course, is the thing, you know, to a, a masculine spirit. That's your pride. You don't really like having that bruised. No, I did not like having it bruised by anybody. Now, let me ask a question. That's the next question. I'm sure you're asking this. Okay. Are we mad? Are we over the band? Are we over the deep sea? No. Because um, you and I have talked to many people in the mental health community and they have confirmed that there definitely is no uh, multiple personality type of um, circumstances. There is no stressors. There is no escapism there's no uh, escape mechanism which that means is that in the typical multiple personality disorder interaction only one entity shows up at a time the other one does it's just like the other one fades out and then it's kind of like the uh, beyond in sasha fierce yes exactly that's exactly what that type of multiple personality disorder type condition that they're normally worried about Beyonce versus Sasha Fierce. Because um, Beyonce is herself. It's pretty easy going by Sasha Fierce's. And, you know, Beyonce says she's just a stage persona. Beyonce doesn't seem to really uh, recognize when Sasha Fierce is, uh, in effect, what's going on. 